All right, and so we... it's just the three of us tonight. No, Kevin. I thought he said he uh, he was going to be on, or maybe he was going to be on. I mean, it's fifteen minutes in. I can be. He's a little bit of ADHD. He might have forgot. <laughs> a little bit of ADHD. A little but more than me. <laughs> All right. So I, the one thing I wanted to go into um, to share with the future viewers is uh, some of the fun I had with uh, bringing graphics. And I, I, I know this is going to be very different than, than how you do graphics, Braden, but this is a, this is a special case and kind of uh, what I was messing with during the last badge and for that uh, business card badge. Yep. So let me share my screen and uh get into the fun stuff all right close that all right and close that and close that and what else do i have open that i shouldn't have open do, 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 do. all right so i i this is a really easy and fun process so i start with the image converter yep and i pull in just say pull in an image right hey look at that guy and then I go over to black and white picture to see how it's going to pan out. And I, you know, tweak that black white threshold a little bit. I'm marking on front silk screen, but that's going to change. I set a side, a size, and that's, uh, that's a little large for this purpose. So I'll drop it down and then export to file. I wonder what would happen if I just exported to clip clipboard. Mm, I don't know how you'd then get it. On I don't board. either. Yeah. Um, so, hey, go ahead. No, oh, keep going. So that's done. I, I saved it as a CACAD mod file. And now I go, I'm going to go back into the PCB editor and pull it in. Hey, look at that. <sighs> What is that? I import a footprint, right? God, it's been it's been literally months. Yeah, since yeah, I, did I, this. yeah. I mean, up until now, I I knew what you were doing, and you, you've now branched off from from what I would tend to do here. Um, in my hardware hacking village talk this year's zero to SAO, I I have the i walk through this whole thing and you can you can take a look at that video um because the first implementation of how to pull graphics in for a custom sao i use exactly what you're doing here and i make a mistake and i keep that in the video so that you can you can see how i correct the mistake all right so this Ooh, is nice. this is where i where it got interesting because i brought in the, those pictures of of the group right and then I started messing around with it in here and I was like, what can I do? I can click on a random area and select portions of it. And then, and then, uh, specials grouping properties. There we go. I can change what that is. That group of stuff change some of it to mask and that's how i got that weird you know uh the mixture of silk and mask on those images like it wasn't complicated it wasn't design based it was just kind of random clicking and if i deselect it you see what it ended up doing so trying to follow along it is exporting as a symbol or uh as a footprint ah thank you so, uh, so what I'd suggest doing is is uh, display while you're looking is go to the internet and find uh, some graphic that you like that mm -hmm. doesn't have a lot of shading to it. So, uh, what I tend to do if I'm looking for a piece of of art or something that I want to use as a reference point or just use as an example, um, I'll do a an internet search for you know christmas tree but i'll put the word clip art in there as well and then you tend to find examples that are 
you know, one color or two colors, but not a lot of shading and stuff like that. And then the uh, bitmap to footprint or bitmap to keycad translation that Bob just showed uh, works really, really well. So actually, Bob, if you don't mind, uh, well, I'm gonna let you finish this. Uh, could you do an internet search for uh, oh, just a Christmas present clip art? One second. Sure. How do I? Never mind. I'm just going to put it in audio module because I don't feel like dealing with making a new library. I just want uh, to place for it foot, for footprints. You don't have to create libraries. Just drop them in. I just have, I have one folder. Right. That's what I do, but I don't have that on this computer. So. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So, uh, so that's in there now. And now I want to place add footprint and I put it in there, right? Yay. There it is. Come on. I probably made it too big for this thing. No, it's not too bad. And I place it mainly because I want to see what it looks like in 3d viewer. Take your time. Yeah, it's no got pressure. a lot of little. It's got a lot of a lot of little lines in it. It does. It's probably going to crash my thing if I keep messing with it. <sighs> wow, that's uh, that's longer than I thought it would be. This machine has a GPU in it too. I'm kind of surprised. It might be set to not use the GPU. I can't remember. Where the heck do I end? Build tech layer 39. Is this like reticulating splines? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I know what that is. Or rather, I know where it's from and don't know what it is. All right. Well, what was your uh, request, Brayden? Do an internet search for uh, Christmas present clip art. Let's see if we can find something relatively simple. And like I said, I tend to see when you use clip art, you tend to get. Um, okay, let's, scroll, let's, see, let's see if we can find something that would convert pretty easily. Um, to black and white? <laughs> yeah, to black and white, exactly. <laughs> oh, there's a black and white one. Yeah, I'll just take that one. That's easy. All right. Ooh, it's a WebP file. Oh God, this seems to be the, the new norm. It drives me nuts, but oh well. Yeah, I was getting in trouble when I was looking for uh, art of my own. Do, does the importer not import WP, WebPs? I haven't tried uh, it. I don't, I, I yeah, don't. this is failing. This is really bad. Oh, there you go. I don't want to report the to Microsoft. Damn it. That didn't work. Killed it hard. It's amazing. Yeah. I hope I saved. <laughs> File recent. Well, none of that's recent. Good Lord. Oh, there we go. Oh, didn't like any of that. What well, am the, I only, doing? the only th the only thing you added to the board was that footprint, and that was your problem. So I would right, say, right, but but when I launched the app, it didn't pull that product. Oh, that's Cockat Five. That's why. All right, wrong one. I got both of them installed. There we go. That'll make more sense. Hmm. Maybe I can just. Oh, there we go. The uh, uh, export to clipboard. If you just uh, Alt Tab to your project, you can just Control V and it will uh, be there. No, oh, there you go. So I'm pretty sure I need to do it negative. Yay. 
Yeah. So when it comes to adding clip art or, or graphic <laughs> footprints to a PCB, um, you can do it as Bob did it, where you do an import of the footprint directly on the PCB. What I tend to do is actually add it to the schematic as a part. The reason for that is, is then if I do a full board update, I don't lose things. Um, so that's the only reason why I do it that way. Um, Cause I have, I tend to use the, um, uh, Bob, if you go to tools update, there's a set of check boxes up there. Um, Delete footprints with no symbols. Yeah, and see, I normally have that set. The reason why I normally have that set is because if I remove something from the schematic, I want it to remove from my printed circuit board, right? But if you've added custom foot, if you've added extra footprints to your board that aren't in your schematic, then you end up losing them every time you do an update. Right. Hmm. So what I do is, is Bob, if you go over to your schematic, I'll show you what I do. And I keep, a, I keep them all down in the bottom corner. So down in that, so I do is I do an add A. Okay. Uh, I think it's under mount, mounting hole. All we're looking for here is a footprint that, I mean, a, a symbol that has no electrical characteristic to it. So I think it's under mounting hole or something of that nature. Mechanical. Mechanical. Thank you. Mechanical. And you're looking for a, a non-plated or just any, just any mechanical hole. Heat sink. Would that work? No, nope, Mounting holes. Perfect. Mounting hole is what I use. You don't want fiducial because it actually is something. So I just use a mounting hole. You had it down there before. Yeah, I'm just yeah, right looking there. to see what. I hadn't messed around with this. I just wanted to see what okay. else was. I mean, I've used mounting holes, but yeah, not for this purpose. So I just stick that somewhere, change its name to be Christmas present, or you know whatever piece of graphic it's going to be, so I can remember it. Oh come on, stop it, stop it. So just you know. E. 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 And then just change that to whatever the piece of artwork represents. And then and, set the footprint. And then you'll set the footprint to whatever it is. The footprint is. We haven't created the footprint yet. So, um, yeah. and so on my boards, I tend to have, you know, at least a couple of those um, on my schematic. One will be when I'm doing a challenge coin, it's it's the big overall piece of artwork, but then there'll also be another one, which is, you know, the Braden Lane Studio logo and a couple others. Um, and so that's how I end up doing those. And that way, every time I refresh or update the PCB from the schematic, I don't lose any of the artwork. That's smart. I, I think I probably just unchecked that on mine to avoid yeah. that. And that's the way to do it. The only, the only issue I've had with having that unchecked is there are times I've gone and removed something from my schematic and the part ends up you know, still hanging out on my PCB and I forget, I have to remember to delete it manually. But, um, so yeah, let's go see if we can play with that, uh, that present. We, oh, we haven't downloaded the present image yet or have we? No. Oh, okay. I think I downloaded it, but I haven't imported it yet. I just that's associated cool. it with my picture for now. <laughs> no, that's cool. So, yeah. Uh, how do I get back to the, um, thingy the uh importer importer go all the Directly way back to the, here i do it from the main that main launch page okay so there's no link to it from the toolbar there may be but i always do it from the launch page okay i do everything from the launch page image converter Oh, there we go. That's how you add an image. Okay. No, that's not it. That's you. Where did I did I not save it in there? Well, what we what what Display and I were discussing is we're not completely sure if Keycad represent or recognizes the 
the web image file format now. It doesn't look like it does. It's not in the list. Yeah, okay. And there's that no just... all files options. So we have to somehow get a, a version of that that isn't. I will Windows Shift S screenshot that motherfucker. <laughs> Do you want to select another image that might have a more permissive license? Who gives a shit about licenses? This is class. Okay. Just uh, find, as a disclosure, find find something that has... Yes, we, we will not be using this or... yet. This image is for educational purposes only. We're not going to be using it in our production. All right. Now I don't know where my pictures end up in the snipping tool. I need to use this computer more often. <laughs> when you normally live on a Mac? Yeah. A lot of people are running KiCad on Mac now, native. The M1. Yeah, works great. Works great, yeah. All right, I give up. I think it's probably in pictures. It probably went to pictures. Let's see. Did it go to pictures? No idea. Sort not by any day. of my brain pictures. Nope. Not there. How about the other pictures? Nope. Not there. Not there. Okay. God damn it. Why does everything have to be so complicated? Well, let's see if we can find it. <laughs> yeah. So let's find something that's well, that that red and yellow one would probably work. The red and this gold one? one right there. The red and gold one a little further up. I'm looking for something this with one? high con yeah, looking for something with high contrast okay. colors. Save image as PNG. It'll do that. Cool. Um put it in the top pictures. Dreamy Christmas something bullshit. Yeah. So what you should now get when you convert that to black and white and you would do adjustments you should get that the bow is white the red part is black and the black outline is black and that should be it should look like a present still all right and look at the black and white oops that's not what we want what did you what did you not want can we invert that yeah oh, okay negative there ah, there we go. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> All right, so export to file. Oh, what did you say? What's, display? What's, what size do you want it? Uh, I'll do 25. I, I think I yeah. found a way to get it to work. I'm not sure. Um, All right, so I exported to clipboard. Let me try display. Oh, well. yeah. Uh, switch to the PCB. Uh, yep. You're going to need to save it for a file if you want to have it associated with the footprint. But if you just want to get it onto your board, uh -huh. uh, just hit Control-V. And what is what does it put it on the board as? Uh, a footprint. If, yeah, a footprint. And you can select if it's supposed to be as a front silk screen, front solder mask, e uh, layer eco one, or... Oh, actually, no, it's not a footprint. It's just a piece of, it's just something. And then you just. It is a footprint. It, it, I, I hit edit and it goes to footprint oh, properties. Fascinating. Oh, that's right. So one of the things that got me burned <laughs> on, on uh, the Loomis stick was if you look at those uh, choices there, um, if you were to click on any footprint, you can edit the footprint. You can edit the library footprint, right? If you edit a footprint in your PCB, it will no longer be, it will be different than the footprint that's from the library, but there'll be no indication that you're not using the library footprint. So if you change the library, it wouldn't change that one. Is that where your, your one sideways one came from? Exactly. What happened was, is I had edited the footprint using edit footprint instead of edit library footprint and corrected it on the Loomis ring. And then when I created the Loomis stick, 
it grabbed the library footprint because I was starting a new PCB and I did all my layouts and it didn't have the edit. Hmm. So I had to go back and edit the library footprint. So, oh, I got to zoom back out again. I don't even know where I'm going to so, put this. Uh, what layer is that on? It's on front silk, I believe. Okay. Yeah, that that's your front silk is uh, a cyan color. Yep. Yeah. Cool. <coughs> Gonna get an overlap error. There we go. So I wonder if that will show. Saved. Uh, I think that uh, there's a there label that you need to uh, hide, yep. though. Yeah. The G star there's... star. Unless I want it to say G star star. <laughs> e. You don't say the G, G word. What's the, the four G letter word? G word? I don't know. What's yeah. the four letter G word? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> You just uh, unclick. Yeah, there you go. You don't have a cold, do you, Bob? No, I. Okay. Let me see. Not that I know of. Well, it was just a sniffle. I just wasn't sure you're right. Yeah, I have been sniffling today, and I'm not sure why. I like the way it rendered that switch. That's kind of nice. Makes me happy. And I tell you what, a thousand times over, I prefer a mouse to a trackpad for this reason alone. It's so hard to manipulate this with a trackpad. Can I, I think I've done the um, circuit manipulation on a trackpad, and it just does not compare with a mouse. It doesn't. Yeah. There's, you got so much more. I'm, I'm still waiting for it's. It's in the night lease, but it's not in the production build yet. Uh, support for 3D mouse. I don't even know what a 3D mouse is. But it's ask. normally used. It's normally used for CAD. Oh, okay. It, it it basically it's a it's a six degree input device. Hmm. Interesting. Is it kind of like a trackball or mouse? Well, or... except except um, think of a a big cap, and it doesn't really move much but you if you tilt it forward you get one degree if you push it forward you get a different degree if you mm. tilt it to the side you push it to the side you can rotate it and you can pull it hmm. i know what a 3d mouse looks like <laughs> there's a bunch of different varieties of it um, um space mouse is one brand oh, okay i see um, I run a Space Pilot Pro on my CAD system. Hmm. Um, anytime you're manipulating a 3D image, it's it's really <laughs> handy. Oh, I'm sure it is for three hundred dollars. Oh God, no! Don't pay three hundred dollars for it. Buy it. Buy buy a used one off of eBay for about sixty bucks. Figures. I mean, I mean, I bought one that was. I don't know if it was a refurb or whatever, what, or, you know, some big CAD office went out of business or something, but I bought my first one for 49 bucks and I bought my second one for, I think, 69 bucks. And it was brand new when I got it. So. So, um, but anyway, while we're on the subject of images, you think not to drive the lesson, no. Drive the uh, lesson. That's what we're here for. Yep. yep. All right. Uh, okay. So we Im imported a uh, custom image, right? Mm -hmm. um, is there any way to get like a custom shape of the PCB uh, imported into CatCat? Yep. Like there's it... two. Yep. There's two ways to do it. Um, if we don't want to get too down, too far down the path. Um, I am not prepared to... to go into Inkscape tonight. No, that's right. <laughs> Um, but basically, any tool that will let you create an SVG outline or a DXF file as an outline, <clears throat> you can use those to create your edge cut. You can import them to be used as your edge cut. So do you think you can talk us through it? 
Um, find it. Yeah, find. See if you can find a DXF file of a Christmas tree, or an apple, or a toy car, or something of that nature. DFX. DXF. There's a. There's my uh, hereditary uh, tendency for dyslexia coming out right there. No, that's all right. I'm, I'm left right dyslexic, so which I guess technically isn't a form of dysle dyslexia. I've been told. So, are we looking for something that's an outline? Yeah. So it would be, you know, like um, so maybe I should add the outline word or. DXF would give you an outline. Well, these I did search D, DXF, and there's lots of DXFs that aren't outlines. Well, yeah, so look at one that look at one that just looks like it's black and white and filled in. Oh, oh, so oh that, silhouette. That, that, okay. That, that, no, no. Scroll a little bit for there's a green one with white. Yeah, see, but see if that's actually a DXF file. Which the one? Green outline one. Over here. Left. Yeah. Is that a DX or is that a is that a licensed thing? It's an SVG. And it's licensed. <laughs> yeah, it's licensed. Um, I think we can do it with an SVG. See if we can find an SVG then. I think I found the Apple logo with uh, DXF, but this, this site, 3axis.co, looks a little sketchy. <laughs> there's, there's five different continue download buttons. Oh yeah, no, I, I don't. I know exactly what you're telling me. Let's see if I can find something here real quick. I have a hole. Let's see if I find anything here. Okay, search for free and you get a dollar ninety nine. Fuck the internet. <laughs> I'm amazed at how many how many of these now show up. They're coming from Etsy. Yep, there's a lot of people that uh, are trying to make make their money. Yeah. Download this free. Can can it be a silhouette like this? Filled in. I think so. All right. Chickfetty.com. Yeah. It's gonna actually let me Chickfetty. I guess that's better than Chick Feta. Yeah, that's not doing anything. That just kind of hung up there. God bless the internet. Or is that it? Is that how the browser? I'm not sure if it can open. Nope. Well, let's see if we can do it with an it's SVG. All Etsy. Let's see if I can find an SVG that will fit our expectations. Oh, got it. Free Christmas tree SVG file. Let's see if that one will get with. What does it All look right. like? It's pretty outliney. Okay. It's hard to see the way it rendered, but my browser tried to like display it. So, all right. So then, what do I do once I have the SVG? Um. Pull it in as a footprint and apply it to the edge no, cuts layer? Maybe, but let's, so let's close your 3D viewer. Yeah. Chick Fetty. Okay. So I don't know that. Um, well, can you do a. Do, before we start, select edge cut, the edge yeah, cut layer. Uh huh. Okay, now go to file and let's see what options we have. I this is not how I did it before, but that's all right. We'll see. Import graphics. Yeah, let's see what this does. Oops. What options did it give us for where it was importing it to? Did it or didn't it oh, say? Oh, here we go. Let me see if I can get this to work. DXF. There ah, we go. User drawings. So we'll switch that to edge cuts. Let's see if this works. Import scale, interactive placement, default line width, reduce that down. We don't want a big fat thick line. 
Point oh five. What? Oh five. Oh five. Oh five. There we go. Inches? Mill millimeters. Default oh, units. Yeah. Default units is yeah, okay. I think default, yeah, just let's see what we end up with this. We might have to go back and do it again. No file selected. Right. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Pictures. All right. No graphics items found in file. Okay, so it doesn't support SVG for doing the import. Huh. I did find a DXF, but uh, the borders are huge. So I'm not going to, I don't think that's a good one to use. What do you mean the borders are huge? Uh, the, uh, the edge, I put it on the edge cut layer and it's an Apple logo. But oh, okay. it looks like an Apple logo if you were to like uh, do balloon art with it. <laughs> oh, I gotcha. Thank you. So well, let's see if we can find. Ideally, we want a DXF. I thought we. I'm gonna go back and see if I can find one more. Well, that one's not so bad. That's CDR. That's a PNG, you know. Um, so another way, Bob, go back to the, the launch page and uh, do the image convert. Let's see if there's an option for doing an edge cut from there. I do think there's a, a way to choose. Well, no, but you could use the other thing to to move it and to then, the other and layer, then re -ed, and then re-edit it. Yeah. So let's try to load it from the thing that I already got. Let's see. Oh, that's not it, is it? So it doesn't show the SVG in this one. Yeah, it's it only expects a PNG. Um... This seems like a next week kind of project. No, I mean, it, the thing is, is, is edge cuts. We're just, so edge cuts have got to come in as one of two ways. They've either got to come in as a footprint or they've got to come in as a DXF. And, or you could just draw them. <laughs> yeah, or you can just draw them. Um, so Bob, go ahead and find an outline of a tree or a solid tree as a PNG and we'll do an import of it. Where'd my damn browser? Oh, there it is. All right. Launch another damn browser. Is that a shortcut key on yours? What? Christmas tree outline or clip oh, art. Yeah, there you go. That one right there. Just, yeah, one of the first two is fine. Yeah, we'll just start with that one. Save the image of JPEG. We like JPEGs. That's fine. We can do that too. It's probably going to have that stupid logo on it, but we could cut that out. Yeah. yeah. All right. Back to here image converter, load. Pictures. Do, 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 do. I said pictures. There it is. All right. So, how big would it want to be to be a whole board? Let's make it 90 tall and see where. Okay, right there. That's fine. No, 75, 76.95. That's probably not too bad. 
Cool. And now export that as a footprint because we'll have to do a little bit of editing to it. Oh, cool. look. <laughs> <laughs> Got rid of the text with black white threshold. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're still going to have to do some editing to it. But yeah, so go ahead and save that as a foot for export as a file. Okay. T R E E E. Now let's go into the go back to the launch page. Get no, go back to the launch face. page. Why am I going back to the launch page? I'll show you in a second. Okay. Uh, footprint editor. Mm -hmm. Find your tree. Mm. That's really slow. Yeah, that's uh, slower than slow. It is making progress. Oh, it's speeding up now. It's running. It's running. Running. Now it stopped. There we go. And once it pops up, find your tree. Import. No, just find your tree. It's you. You saved the. Where'd you save your your tree footprint to? Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't save it in here. It's just a file. Yeah, so I, have to, I have to import it, right? No. Where'd you save it to? To my pictures. Oh, okay. Um, so, anytime you save a footprint, what I do is I have in my KiCad space somewhere, right? I keep all of my custom footprints in one place, uh -huh. and then I can just open them up and look at them. Are you saying if you save it in a specific directory, this will just yeah. see it? Yes. Yes. Well, let's let's set me up for that. Um, so go back to the go back to the main page, your launch page. But I need to make a I need to make a, a library that's in a space, right? We'll do that in a second. So okay, get out, go back to your launch page. So um, this thing I got to zoom in here. Um, <laughs> No, no, no. We don't want to do this yet. We don't want to do this yet. Okay. Preference. Go back to your launch page. There you go. Preferences. Manage footprint libraries? Preferences. Yep. Okay. Manage footprint libraries. Oh. Well, now I hit preferences, so hang on. We don't need that. The one I imported might have been a little too big. Is there any way to shrink down a graphic? You got to start over again. You you can ah. you can you can say what size you want the output footprint to be. Yeah, in those dimensions, that's that, that's definitely the best place to choose that. Yeah. So. Um, so a plus. Just a second. You've got. No, no, no. All you need to do is. E, KiCad six point oh shared KiCad three D models. And E KiCad 6.0 shared. Oh, so throw it in there somewhere? Yeah, use that directory. Okay. You can create your own, but you don't have to. You can just reuse that one. Okay. So now do your image convert and or you can just go but you can go find the, the footprint file and move it to that folder. But yeah. Okay, let's do that. Because this just this whole thing just makes me really happy. All right. <laughs> Is that I it? Magic, I thought magic shroom, shrooms would make you. No, that's the image file. You need to find the footprint file. Okay, I don't remember where I saved that. Damn, it's still too big. All right, black and white. Make the letters go away. Yeah, they're fine. That's fine. Um, Set the size to ninety-five. There you go. Ninety-five wide. Yep. And then, is there a lot of outline to this or something? Because this is taller than it is wide. Why is it showing up as? Never mind. I believe it it's X and it. Y. It's X and Y. So its width is less than its height. Okay. Okay. So now just do an export to file, and we got to pick the right location this time. Okay. T E keycard. What was it? Six. 6 0, share. Share. Good. Footprints. Footprints. Just save it right in there or make a directory? No. 
Hold it. Those so, are... um, where is that? That's not what I thought I was going to get. Well, are you on the footprint editor part or? Okay, so that's not where I thought we were going to be. That actually looks like it's the. Yeah. I've got an alternative uh, workflow. Well, we're not there yet. It needs okay. to say. Let me fail you. before you fix me. <laughs> All it, right. Got, oh, just like the file, the, the folder name has to have dot pretty at the end of it. Oh. See, you could have let me fail before you. Never mind. Oh, well, that's a different one. It's probably an easier way. Okay. Save so now it. You can save oh. it here. There we go. Okay, but so now... Since, well, just a second. Since you created that folder, we do have to do one thing now. What? Go back to the home page, the launch page. And you actually started this, so it would be preferences, footprint, directory, folder, yeah, library, thank you. Um, and click the folder icon, not the plus. Oh, except you want global. Click global at the top. There. Now click the folder icon at the bottom below that list. Click the folder icon. And now go find that custom folder you just did, which should be right here. Why is this empty? Air, key tab, footprints, custom. So if the folder doesn't exist, you have to add import the folder, but you could drop it into an existing folder. Yeah. And it'll just show up. Yeah. At this okay. point, it, you no longer have to add, like with symbols, you have to keep adding them to a library. But once, but footprints, the folder is the library. So you can just keep gotcha. dumping stuff in the folder and they just keep showing up. So if you find your custom folder, custom so you tree. Get tree. Where's your why, tree? Why is it not showing? There we go. There it is. So now what we need want to do is we want to edit that layer. So select everything or select that outline. Hit E. He's not doing anything. Okay. Click outside the tree. I just right clicked on it. And then what was it? There's no properties. Oh, no. you can right click, right? Uh, right click properties. So unselect it. Let's see if we can figure out what it thinks it is. So just click single click. Okay. Now right click. And you should see properties. Yeah, it would have worked here. Okay. It must have selected. So now just change the layer to edge. Click OK. Click outside that. Oh, I see what happened was is, is that it's the G asterisk asterisk thing must have gotten selected. But anyway, you now have a footprint, which is an edge cut. Cool. So save this. There you go. And now what I do is I go to my schematic and I add another, or you can just, yeah, I would have another. Reuse it. Just reuse it then. Tree. <laughs> so custom tree. And now if you go to your PCB and you do an update, There we go. Yeah. That's Yay. a pretty that's a pretty small tree relative to uh, all the stuff you'd have to cram onto it. <laughs> True. <laughs> Let me see. Um, so if, hmm? No, I was gonna say, so you know, um If you unselect it, it should be that same yellow that that rectangle. Yeah. 
much thicker than we need it to be, but that's, it's there. And yeah, you can actually change the thickness of that line and think, um, we'd have to do it back in the, in the footprint editor. Could have made that a thin line. Let's see if DRC will uh, cooperate and fill. Yeah, so now if you single click that, hit Sorry. E. No, it's not letting us do it there. It's not really Actually, one thing, it it's a whole bunch of things. Yeah, but it's all interlinked. And so you, I would think that you'd be able to. Well, you, if you change that uh, layer to uh, edge cut, that should work, I think. It's oh. already on edge cut. Um, Just tempor it, temporarily change it to like user and see if it will let us change the line thickness. Oh, no, I know why it's doing it. Do you notice what we're looking at here? Yeah, it's a whole bunch of things, not just one thing. No, it's not even that. What? It's, a, it's an interior and an exterior cut. Hmm. I don't know what that means exactly. It's not a line. So if you notice, it's got those little, it's got little dots all the way up on the outside and all the way down the inside. What does that mean in fab? I don't know which it's going to take for the edge cut. It probably take the interior line for the edge cut on the end the, as far as fab is concerned. <clears throat> but I don't know if it takes the interior line or the exterior line. And this is why you use SVGs instead of trying to import a JPEG. It's also why I use a 0 0.05 line thickness. Which we didn't have the option to do because it's not a line. It's not a line, exactly. This is also why I try to if if I'm not if I'm not going through, you know, an SVG to get my edge cut, that's why I try to find a DXF file, because it is just a line. Yeah. All right, so that was a fun exercise, but it ended in failure. Well, A, because, I mean, it would probably work, but a Christmas tree is the wrong volume for all those components you're trying to fit on the page or on the on the board. Yeah, well, that that's not really my goal here, but, but yeah, you know, I, it might work with what display is doing. I don't I really know. I, I don't see how you fit a battery pack and a Pico on that arrangement. Yeah, it doesn't have enough. It doesn't have enough physical volume. To uh, it doesn't to seem that. like the the measurements came out right no it's it's it, lo it looks like it's about a, almost 100 millimeters tall i <sighs> why 15 why 107 yeah that would make it 90 i mean i found one that was more rectangular but still yeah 92 so that's that's this line Is is fifteen oh, to one hundred seven? Okay. Yeah. So so zoom back out again, <laughs> so we can all see it. What do you mean? Oh, that tree is smaller than ninety two millimeters. Yeah. Oh, I know why. It scaled the original image, and remember there was white space below the that's, image. That's that's what I was concerned about. Yeah. Yeah. Another reason why having a DXF file is the way to go. Yep. Um, but I at some point, I probably will just if you know if if people want to do, you know, irregular shapes, custom shapes, interior cuts, exterior cuts, um, doing it in Inkscape is the current way, and fairly soon, any SVG editor will be an alternative because. Um, Thea Flowers is eventually going to publish her um, web-based solution. Okay. So in terms of, of getting the, you know, assuming we found a shape that we liked and we got everything crammed onto it, how does that affect fab? Fab will just cut to the edge cut. So like, let's assume for a minute, everything fit on a PCB that looked like H1. Right. They will literally do the whole board. And then the last step they will do is they will route that edge cut and you will get back a PCB that is that shape. So you don't have to worry about paneling it and all that kind of fun. No, jazz. no you, will, you will actually get an irregular shaped PCB back. 
And they'll throw away all the leftovers. They'll throw away everything else. You will get a stack of Christmas trees. Hmm. Um, all right. Yeah, because I've done, I do that every, I do that every year. I mean, that's what um, Marvin was, the paranoid yeah. android. I, that, what you saw was not a panel. I actually got a hundred of that shape. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this is already giving me ideas for the holidays. Yeah, you know, and so you know, normally every year I do a I do a holiday ornament. So I've got a Christmas bell, I've got a snowman. He's kind of pudgy looking and cartoonish. And I did a tin soldier last year that was modeled after a wooden Christmas ornament my grandmother used to make in the '60s. Wow. Um, and again, I just you know I I trace out the edge cut. And that's the that's the shape I get back from uh, from the fab. All right. Well, this is good stuff. Um, do you want to call it a night? I'm willing to. Uh, unless... you got any... do you want to. Are you getting any other questions? Uh, that was the main one that was on my mind. Like. I, I was thinking about a Christmas tree myself or some sort of Christmas ornament. Maybe I yeah. could make something uh, to hand out. It'd have to be a pretty big Christmas tree to fit everything on it. Well, no, more it would be like uh, uh, kind of like what you did with the Marvin, just like a little battery and LED lights on it. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so one thing that I will give as a tip for becoming more proficient is rather than try to memorize all the shortcut keys that I give you. Mm -hmm. um, Find your own. So, no, almost every place that you would normally go and use your mouse to do something. So like, Bob, go ahead and right click on the present. So all down the right hand side are the shortcut keys. So you'll notice, uh, Properties, E. Flip from front to back, F. Rotate, R. Move, M. Right? So if, you're, if you can't remember a shortcut, that's fine. Go do the mouse operation, and you'll find the shortcut. So let's do another one, which would be, um, uh, what's another one you end up moving the mouse for, Bob? That's a fairly common task everything okay just because i have not adapted to keyboard shortcuts that's fine so if you go to the schematic as an example because i know there's you know i know you move the mouse around a lot there so you know if you wanted to go add a component normally from the mouse i was going to say do it the mouse way and you'll see i think you'll see oh so every other time you tell them to use the keyboard now I well guess, because I because now what i want to do is now look see add symbol a add a power p add a wire w right so if you can't remember the shortcut keys go ahead and do the mouse operation and it will show you the shortcut key right next to it like if you hover over the buttons for adding a symbol that's a or adding yep. a powerpoint that's p yep and so in, so the next time around instead of dragging your mouse up and clicking place and then add symbol you just Remember, oh, okay, it's A. You hit A, and it just automatically does all that same stuff. It's, so, a, it's a good habit, time-saving habit to train yourself to do. I yeah, and all I'm saying have is to do that myself. <laughs> yeah, but you know, instead of memorizing or having a cheat sheet for the for all of the shortcuts, you know, use the mouse and see what the shortcut is, and then the next time use the shortcut. And if you forget the shortcut, just use the mouse again, and it will remind you what the shortcut is. Well, I like the footprint placeholder uh, uh, trick. Yeah. That's a that's useful. I feel like that's going to come in handy a lot, especially the way you end up doing multiple individual graphics as opposed so many. To, yeah, as a but right. So now you can just have a bunch of those down there, and you can just you literally can copy them from board to board. Yeah. Uh, that's that. I mean, for for both of the last two things, that's what I well for all the things. That's what I did. Is I yeah. individual pictures from the members, and I like 
jostle them around until they, you know, until I, I get some kind of aesthetic satisfaction. Yep. And I still screwed up. If you look at uh, Tarot, I think it's Tarot, on the back of that, Spud's picture is like part just raw, unmasked <laughs> board. And I'm like, I was not trying to, like, imply skin color with this. <laughs> no. I, uh, yeah, actually, other than all the video pictures and stuff, I haven't physically held a tarot badge to, to, mm. to interrogate what it looks like. Of course, now I've completely blown the firmware off of the, the uh, Tree of Life badge, and I'm using it for doing development. <laughs> That's what it's for, right? It's a, it's a platform. Kind of cool. Um. We just put a, a placeholder software on it with some cool, fun toys. But yeah, that, that was that was the intent to begin with. Is what do you want to do with it? You know? Yeah, and I'm running Circuit Python on it now. <laughs> nice. Kevin's spinning in his grave. Where the hell is Kevin? Why is he not here tonight? I don't think he's a veteran. Okay. He's got no excuse. Yeah. Where's he at? Where's so anything else any other things you want to explore or should we call it i think we're good can't think of anything right now all right so i'll stop my share and then i'll stop the recording